Palantir stock, another massive day. Now the stock price is well over $15 a share. Some big news happened here recently, as in the past uh, few hours. In regards to Palantir, I want to share my thoughts on the huge news in regards to Palantir. I want to share my thoughts and kind of react and give my opinion on what's going to happen with Palantir stock moving forward. Is this stock going to keep this momentum going? Are we talking about $18, $20, $25? Uh, are we likely going to drop back down? I want to kind of give my perspective, somebody that's been a shareholder for a little bit here, and, um, you know, kind of take you through a few things. So hope you guys enjoy this as always. I appreciate everybody subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for being here, folks. And also, before we get into all this Palantir stuff, I put together some workshops for you guys. These are absolutely free. It's the pinned comment down there to access these. One is if you make less than $100,000 per year, and one is if you make over $100,000 per year, investing in 2023 and beyond with those sorts of incomes. Once again, those are free to access their pinned comment down there. So make sure you grab those before uh, you, you click off of this video when we're done, okay? So, Palantir, I thought I would start with just showing you some a couple shocking things, okay? Year to date now at this point in time, Palantir is up 138%. And you know what's crazy, okay? Think about this for a moment. This is nuts to think about. I mean, when I went into this year, I was down on Palantir, right? I was red. I was red on Palantir. And now we're up 93% on this stock, up 35% thousand dollars. Now, when a move happens that fast, some people are going to say, bubble, it's going to pop. It's, it's too much. It's too much too fast, right? It's not how the stock market works. It's never been how the stock market works. Why don't I go ahead and show you this, okay? 30 months ago, since 30 months ago, in January 2021, this stock is down almost 40%, right? I could just as easily as I could dismiss the, the most recent move and say it's a bubble, I could easily say Palantir is the most undervalued stock in the world. The stock price hasn't gone anywhere for 30 months. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look at all the growth the company's had. Look at everything they're doing. Look at how much the company's grown. Look at the employee force they've added to. And yet the stock hasn't, hasn't done anything in 30 months, right? So you can never really just justify by saying the stock's gone up so much or down so much. So therefore it's a huge deal or it's a huge bubble. It doesn't work like that. Never has worked like that, okay? And if we go ahead and take a peek since December 2022, right, the stock price is up uh, a whopping 154%. Nonetheless, folks, it has had quite a move. Now, huge news, huge news in regards to Palantir, okay? Palantir stock surges to a 17-month high on news special ops contract valued at $463 million, okay? So this contract supposedly uh, is for about five years in regards to Palantir, okay? Big, big government deal. Now, analyst Louis De Palma at William Blair said the award was a renewal of an existing contract. So first is, I think that's great news. Like, especially in regards to these government deals, like we want to see them continue to renew, renew, right? These are, these are massive deals. I mean, you know, 400 plus million dollar contract over five years. That's huge, okay? But he said he believes that renewals is at a higher revenue run rate. That's great news. Based on conversations within the industry, De Palma believes the period of performance is five years, he said. And he also believes the revenue run rate is in the mid $80 million range compared with the prior revenue run rate of $65 million, right? So this basically means Palantir's delivering even a better product experience for you know, this entity, right? Which is very important because this is something we want to see with Palantir. We want to see them land bigger deals with current clients. That's very, very important, okay? And in regards to the government, in regards to anything obviously military related, like Palantir is really in good with these folks, okay? And I have some folks that are in the private stock group, okay? And we have, we have I think, the most outstanding Palantir community of any Palantir community inside the private stock group, right? And I can tell you some of these folks used to work in the military, okay, and are very familiar with Palantir's products and have had nothing but great things to say about it. And I can tell you, like, Palantir and the government, really, really close. The, the, the experience Palantir delivers to the government is top tier, okay? Now, something very important here, okay? As a result, this is quote, as a result, there's a net increase of roughly $20 million for annual revenue run rate, De Palma wrote in a note to clients. Based on Palantir's $2.2 billion in annual run rate, right, for revenue, this renewal does not move the needle. So yes and no, okay? So yeah, for Palantir doing several billion dollars of revenue, right, and probably a lot more in future years, yeah, if you're only making an extra uh, $20 million a year from this client, yeah, in terms of a percentage basis, that's a very low percentage. What is that, like an extra 1% or so of total revenue? So from that 
con you know, from that standpoint, I understand it. But think about this a little bigger for a moment. Think of it, you know, let's dive a little deeper here, okay? Two things. One is, this is still a, a nearly $500 million deal that Palantir got versus somebody else could have got that deal. So which means Palantir is clearly the winner, winner, chicken dinner in this situation, okay? But the second thing is much more powerful, in my personal opinion. And if you're a Palantir shareholder, if you're somebody that's looking at Palantir stock and you're interested, if you're a bear or a bull in regards to the stock, I think this is very important to understand this point, okay? And that is Palantir, because their products are so great, they're able to get in with the customer and then over time make much more money. I mean, we're talking about an extra, if we're talking extra $20 million a year over five years, that's 100 million dollars, okay? That's nine figures of extra revenue, which means Palantir's, what they're delivering is that outstanding. That's very important, extremely important, okay? And so if they're able to do that, then they're able to do that likely with more government customers over time. They're likely able to do that with more commercial customers over time. Remember, they're still a baby infant in regards to the commercial business, right? So to me, this is way bigger than just like it's an extra $20 million roughly per year. Way, way bigger than that in my personal opinion, okay? Now, next thing that's very impactful here is look at the revenue growth that's expected for this company over the next several quarters. So analysts have them doing 12% revenue growth in the current quarter we're in, 15% revenue growth in the September quarter, 17% revenue growth in the December quarter, and 18% growth in the you know first quarter of 2024, okay? No, you just saw that government contract. We know, what did Alex Karp tell us in the most recent interview, okay? Alex Karp said, that they're getting as many inbound calls in a month that they would usually get in a year, okay? So it's very likely that Palantir sales folks are very busy right now closing deals and are going to be closing a lot of deals over this next many, many months in regards to Palantir. Now, if that's a situation, I can tell you that revenue is going to likely beat and potentially beat quite substantially over the next several, several quarters, okay? Now, if that's a scenario, where should your mind go next? Your mind should say, you know what? If revenue, if revenue is going to come in that incredible, let's say much stronger than what analysts have in, that, that are analysts are anticipating, then what's also likely to happen? Well, EPS is likely to come in much better than analysts expect, right? Which matters in a significant way. So we could be looking at a story here where revenue growth way exceeds what people are expecting and earnings per share growth as well. No, remember what CARP used to say, okay? CARP would say, we're expecting to grow the revenues 30% a year on average, right? And then they backed away from that uh, probably about, gosh, that's probably about a year ago now at this point in time, okay? If Palantir really has this sort of demand that we think it's likely having now at this point in time, there's very much a possibility that CARP could go back in next conference call and say, you know what? We're back to being confident we're going to grow 30% plus a year on average for many years to go in the future. If Alex Karp goes ahead and says that and commits to that again, it's massive for the stock price because you've got a bunch of analysts that are expecting 12 to 18% revenue growth. If all of a sudden you're talking about we're going to grow 30% plus, we're getting back, there's also a scenario that could play out that it's such a shocking number that no one even anticipated that, right? NVIDIA is a perfect example that analysts had them growing 6% next quarter. They're going to grow 60%. So don't don't take out anything, you know, there's always, there's always a lot of possibilities here in regards to this, right? Well, all I know is Palantir's set up in a situation where the expectations are very low and it's looking like, if anything, they're gonna surprise in a, in a substantial way to the upside here, okay? Now, in regards to where does the stock go from here, okay? Because I understand there's a lot of people that are kind of thinking, what, what, you know, where does the stock go from here? My opinion is this stock probably chills in the $14 to sixteen fifty range, or $14.50 to sixteen fifty for probably the, the next, I would say, two months, unless we get more big news. Like, let's say there's a scenario where Alex, you know, the CARP and the team come out and say, we're going to do revenues of, uh, you know, 30% next quarter, something like that. Like, like, or they say, you know, we're growing much more quickly than we thought we were going to grow. So we're actually going to come in with likely revenue of blah, 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 next quarter. Like if something happens before, between now and the next earnings period, that's kind of like shocking news. Then Palantir is going to have its next level of growth. If they land some new huge contract on the, on the government side or the commercial side, 
that's something where, yeah, the next thing you know, the stock's probably $17, 18 $19 at that point in time. But if we don't get any big news between now and the next earnings period, then we'll be just kind of chilling for a bit here, fourteen fifty to sixteen fifty. So you know, you never really know. Things are things are developing so quickly. You never know when the next big deal could be announced tomorrow, the next week, next month. Um, you never know if all of a sudden Carp and the team says, you know, comes out with a press release and says, you know, we're growing double, triple the rate that analyst thought we were going to grow. We we're doing we're going to put out preliminary revenue of uh, blah 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 number for next quarter, and let's say it's massively more than what analysts expect. That that's a needle mover, and that's something that would keep the stock moving at that point in time. The worst case scenario for Palantir is there's no news between no no big news that is right between now and the next earnings period. And next earnings period numbers were to just come in kind of sluggish, and revenue wasn't that exciting. If that's a situation, then the stock would fall down quite a bit, like you know at least a twenty to forty percent fall from here if that scenario happened. But based upon everything we're hearing. Doesn't look like that's too realistic, folks. And so um, Palantir's in a pretty good spot. We're in probably a chill zone here for a bit. And if we get big news, then you know, the momentum's gonna continue and it's gonna be a even more fun ride than ever, okay? Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Make sure you guys get those free workshops. That's gonna be the pinned comment down there for access to that. Much love and have a great day.